Oh my God, I hate to be right, but I was right because I remember a couple of reviews ago, I said that Morgan, the reason Morgan was so upset with Ben was because he outed her that she didn't have a BSc and guess what? She proved me right. And I am so happy and so relieved for Ben that he finally gets the divorce. I know he's worried about his family and stuff, but I am happy that he is free of Morgan and can move on with his life. Hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie again. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight, season 15, episode 13. Oh my God. <laughs> this episode was great because they got to meet with the experts and it's, it was nice to see. I think, as I said last week, these participants have got way more expert review than any of the previous participants at all. Anyway, I'll review the couples and we'll see how we go. Um, we'll start off with Ben and Morgan. I, I, I think, like a lot of people, I'm surprised that the, the experts haven't said anything about Morgan and haven't questioned why she lied. I even tweeted out that why is nobody asking Morgan that what did Ben say or what did he do that upset her so much? Because I remember the only two things that came out was the fact that he said she wasn't a nurse. He questioned her, her, with her whether she was a nurse because she didn't have a BSc. And also the fact that she said, oh, you know, Justin said, you know, Ben Morgan was jealous because of because Ben had a perfect family. But that can't be reason enough for someone to break up their marriage. So I, just like everybody else, am curious to find out what exactly did Ben say that would cause such a backlash and that would cause her to lack trust in him and that would cause her to say, I want a divorce. I think he hurt her feelings, as I said before, by outing her that she lied, but that was not his secret to keep. If she wanted to keep it a secret, she didn't need to tell Ben. She saddled Ben with a lie and then expected him to hold on to that lie and he wasn't comfortable. So he spoke to someone and sadly the person he spoke to had loose lips and passed it on to the next person and the next person came out. It was bound to come out. And I'm surprised that nobody has asked that question. And I don't know whether it's because the editing has been I just said it in a way whereby let's blame Ben and hold him accountable for whatever's gone wrong um, or and make Morgan look like the victim or whatever, but I wish that had come out. Um, I am happy. I am sad and I'm happy. I'm happy for Ben because he's taken, he's taken, he's, you know, he's taken accountability for his actions. He's taken a, a accountability for what he feels he did wrong. And he has apologized countless times, but Morgan has chosen not to accept his apology. Um, and I like the fact is, that he's in counseling and that he's decided to move on with his life and continue with his counseling. I said this last week and I'll repeat this. Ben is going to make someone an excellent husband. He's going to make someone an amazing husband because if he continues in therapy, if he's able to learn from this experience and grow from this experience, nothing can stop him. And I remember saying that on Married at First Sight, most relationships that work are with one of the partners, are where both partners are willing to do the work. And sadly, Ben was willing to do the work and Morgan wasn't. And this is why they're divorced. Had he had a partner who was willing to do the work as much as he is willing to do the work, they would have been one of the most successful couples on Married at First Sight. But it is what it is. I'm happy for him and I wish him all the best. Morgan, on her part, I don't know why she had to show everybody her license. I said this before, I said the reason why she was so bitter with Ben was because he outed out her lie, he questioned her career, and I remember saying this is why I feel she constantly wears scrubs um, on TV because she wants everybody to believe. The last thing, I think the, the only thing left was for us, her to take us to wherever, de whatever department she works in and she actually be working over a patient and people would be calling her nurse to try and get everybody to believe that. And the fact that she showed her license that doesn't make any difference anyway. That doesn't make any difference. And that I don't know why she did that. Most licenses or most reg nursing registrations are available online in most countries. So you can search someone as long as you have their details to search it. I don't see why she needed to publish that. I don't know what she got from that. And I think this was proof enough to say this is the reason why she's upset. It's not the fact that Ben repeated everything, whatever else she's accusing him of. It's because he told uh, Justin that she doesn't have a BSc and I don't think she's a nurse. She lied to the experts. That's, I think, is the reason. And I'm happy that they, 
I, I like, as someone who's advocating for them to get a divorce, I like the fact that the experts didn't have them drag it out. I like the fact that Dr. Pepper said, okay, this sounds like your decision date. Let's hear it out. What, what is it? And she, normally Dr. Pepper fights for marriages and is always willing to, put, to give um, couples equi- uh, tools to sort of make their relationship work. But in this, she could tell that this wasn't healthy. And she said, decision day, make your decision and let's go. And I, the only part I didn't like was the fact that Morgan got to go first. I wish Ben had been the one to go first and say, no, I want a divorce. I'm sorry. This is not it for me. Anyway, I'm happy for Ben and I hope I wish him all the best. From there, we go to Stasia and Nate. Stasia and Nate met with, Dr. Uh, with Pastor Carl. And I think Pastor Carl is the best person to meet up with them because he's able to hold them both to account. And he had a conversation. He was talking about how, you know, he, he felt, you know, their sort of exercise with the sex toys went a bit too far. And Nate asked him, you know, are you not a freak? And it's like, he can be a freak, but he doesn't need to do international TV. And remember, I've said this before, Married at First Sight will replay that scene forever and ever. Even after they have children, they're still replaying Shanice, uh, giving Jeff their left hand, and Shanice and Jeff have got a daughter who's about four or five years old. So they will continue to play that until Jesus comes. <laughs> and so um, Stasia did own up that she said she has told me she loves him and Nate sort of said he's holding himself back. And for me, I think they are moving at a different pace. And I think Nate has made a lot of changes. He has made a lot of changes. And I think Stasia needs to accept needs to accept that and needs to accept that they're not going to move at the same pace. And it's okay that he hasn't said he loves it as long as he's doing things that shows that he cares. He's, he's registered for counseling. He agreed to sign the post now. Um, he is sort of making whatever changes you want, you know, she's asking him to make. He is saying he's starting to care for her. So I think his friends were able to help her as well and explain that Nate has never really been in a serious relationship. Um, so it's this is something new to him and something that he's having to, to work through. And I think part of lack of experience of a serious relationship came up when, you know, Stasia said, you know, she had cheated before. And I think it's because of his history. This is why he's sort of, maybe his pe- his, per- his father and his mother, you know, sort of how they were not married and stuff. And the, the fact that it could be somewhere along the line, he's seen what cheating can do. And I think this is why he was sort of taken aback by Stasia. But he has to understand that we all have a history. And the fact that he got so upset about Stasia um, having cheated, yet he had the scene where he was getting this trip on on her, on her knees and sort of pour, squirting cream into her mouth and stuff. And it's like, how does he think she's going to feel when she sees that? He, he needs to stop holding putting her on a pedestal still and sort of thinking that she's yes it is good but you know he needs to accept that she's 37 years old a lot of things have happened in 37 years and he has to be open and he has to be willing to understand that there might be things that she has done that he might not like but it's not about what has she done it's what is she doing now and what will she do in future that should be his main focus um on her part Stasia, i think she just needs to continue to watch it, to, to allow him to grow and to continue to, to be open to accepting the changes that he's making to sort of be a better partner. But I think they are one of the most stable couples at the moment. Um, and then from there, um, Lindy and Miguel, Lindy and Miguel, obviously the baby McGindy had to go. And so they went axe throwing and surprisingly, Lindy did way better than that the Miguel and I was surprised by that. But the good thing about Miguel is he is willing to understand and is willing to accept where he's not perfect. And so he understood that, you know, she did way better than him. He appreciated that fact and he was actually happy for her. I think when they sat down with experts, they were having a conversation. And lack of life, life experience as well can affect someone and Lindsay's lack of life experience and the fact that she was very sheltered I think is the reason why she at times throws tantrums and behaves like a little kid in the fact that she keeps going on about oh you haven't seen me at my worst everybody has a dark side for lack of a better word so for her to continue to bring that up she needs to explain she knows that Miguel is always nervous about certain things I think because of his history she needs to tell him what she means by her dark side. What happened? 
when she says she was at a 10. Because Pastor Carl asked, said to her, you can't keep bringing that up because how many times has this happened in your life? And she was like twice. And she's like, so you're scaring someone about something that's only happened two times. And I think it would have been more ideal for her to tell him, this has happened twice and this is how I've responded. And I know her, her friend was able to sort of speak to Miguel and sort of give him some sort of reassurance that, yeah, she does have... She comes across as someone who's very nervous as, and someone who's very... She she lives in La La Land. She's, she's, she lives in make-believe. They live in make-believe world, both of them, because of Miguel and his dressing up and stuff. But I think Miguel is more realistic than, than Lindsay. And I think Lindsay would rather focus on the positive. And so when Miguel brings up conversation about realistic expectations, this is when she panics. And because she doesn't have the tools or the skills to sort of cope with that, this is why she ends up freaking out instead of, oh, you're scaring me, this is threatening. This. And it's like, it's not that deep. It's really, it's not that deep. It's just he is trying to make sure that he sets realistic goals for you and you are not disappointed because what you expect is not what is happening. Um, I like them as a couple. I like the fact that Miguel has completely changed. I know he does sort of have these moments where he sort of, tries to overthink things but that is common for most people anyway um so i wouldn't judge them on that and then justin and alexis justin and alexis for me justin and alexis are another couple that i was advocating that they need to get a divorce because justin and alexis i don't understand them justin and alexis have a lot of problems but instead of focusing on their problems they are more focused on what is going on around everybody else because when they sat down as couples when they had a final meetup um, uh, Alexis brought up the issue of, of you know, of Mitch saying that he doesn't like Kristen wearing makeup. And it's like, that is not your business. You do not need to say anything about that. Focus on the problems that you're having in your marriage. The fact that you people haven't become, haven't been sexually intimate. And the fact that you say that, you know, there are things that need to be worked on. I think um, the the expert they met with is... is his name is actually Megan Good's husband. Is what I'll refer to him. Ex husband is what I'll refer to him because his name has really slipped my mind. I think he he did try to give them the tools that they needed. I think he did try to sort of address what was going on, but I think his lack of experience on the show showed because, like Dr. Pepper, when she sat down with Mitch and and Kristen, she sort of asked, "What are the concerns that you have that you'd like us to address?" Whereas he sort of came. Um, he came in with points saying, oh, on this, how do you feel about that? So, yes, he did try to give them the, I think he was very excited at the opportunity. And he did try to give them the tools to work through. But I think Justin and Alexis, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about them. It's too complicated. I really don't know what to say about them. They need to stop minding everybody else's business and focus on what's going on with them. And maybe if they have sex things will, will look better for them because that will take away most of the tension that they're having because some of the arguments they're having are the same thing. They're arguing about the same thing all the time. And then from there, Kristen and Mitch. Kristen and Mitch, for me, it was nice to see Kristen meet up with Mitch's sister-in-law and have a conversation and sort of his sister-in-law explain the challenges that she had with Mitch because I think Mitch has always been used to everybody else catering to his needs, that he doesn't realize how selfish he is. And so seeing Mitch speak to Kristen's sister was a bit surprising. Um, Dr. Pepper sat down with him and she really addressed a lot of their concerns. She really addressed a lot of their concerns. The issue about the fact that Kristen wants to flip houses, the issues about the fact that um, Kristen felt that they were making a lot of progress, which was all distracted once Alexis brought up the issue of Mitch saying that he want, he doesn't want Alexis to wear as much makeup or to, well, he doesn't want Kristen to wear as much makeup as she does or, you know, or do her hair as she does. And it's like, really, why? You, if that's what you wanted, when you were sitting down with the experts, you should have told them, I want a surfer girl. I want someone who doesn't do makeup. I want someone who doesn't do this. And for you to turn around and suddenly, you know, say this is what you want doesn't make sense once you've seen the person. And so Chris and Mitch, for me, they're another divorce waiting to happen. I, I'm, I think the more, two couples most likely to say yes on decision day are Mitchell, uh, Miguel and Lindy and Nathan and Stasia. 
Christian and Rich, I was expecting them to say we want a divorce after this. I was expecting them to say I want a divorce in the final episode. I'm surprised they're going away on the couple's retreat next week, but I can see things falling apart. Mitch, he seemed surprised. I think because Christian has put up with a lot of his crap over the season, he's suddenly been surprised that she's um, sort of, when she turned around and said, and sort of started speaking up and saying what she wanted, he's been taken aback because he's been so used to everybody catering to his needs that when somebody has suddenly questioned him and Christian has said boundaries and expectations, he's sort of taken aback. This is what you're saying. Oh, this is a blind side. And Christian stood her ground and said, this is not a blind side. I think her having a conversation with Mitch's sister-in-law really helped give Kristen the strength to say no, enough is enough. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. This episode was quite interesting, really. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye, everyone.